Thank you for joining today's presentation. My name is Adrian Garcia, and we'll be introducing a little bit of our uh, NVR uh, CMS solution today and our TV wall. My name is Adrian Garcia, and we also have on the line uh, Joe Hudek and Joe McCarthy. Uh, which will be introducing themselves in just a couple of minutes. So let me begin by giving a brief overview of our agenda today. Um, as we go through our presentation, if you do have any questions, please feel free to um, comment on the Q&A section that we have on the chat box, and we will be happy to address them towards the end of the presentation. Um, our agenda for today will cover a brief introduction of our unified solution, uh, the licensing system for both the CMS and the TV wall. Then we'll jump and get an overview of, the, of both of the products, cover a little bit of a software and standalone options, and uh, then we'll go into a live demo of the CMS product. Finally, we'll summarize our few characteristics of the product and uh, a couple of pages from our website that will be useful. And then we'll go ahead and cover the Q&A section. So let's start with a brief introduction from ACTI from Joe Hudek and Joe McCarthy. Good morning, everyone. This is Joe Hudek. Adrian, can you hear me okay? Yes, you. Excellent. Uh, so, for those of you that are that are new to ACTI, we're also often referred to as ACTI or ACTI. Um, the company uh, was started about 17 years ago with a focus on video surveillance and video management. Uh, the company itself has always been into the IP video space and the, the megapixel solution. So, uh, we have uh, over well over 16 years, 17 years of experience in the marketplace uh, with many successful references from, uh, from small projects to, uh, to large multi-thousand camera systems, uh, which, uh, which is part of the reason that we're doing the presentation today uh, to show how our solution is scalable from that customer that starts with one camera that moves on to thousands of cameras uh, and in between as well. The, uh, the company's uh, worldwide headquarters is actually in Taipei, uh, which is in Taiwan. Uh, important fact because with all of what's going on in the world today with uh, sanctions and um, non uh, NDAA compliances with the federal government, it's important to know that the product that you'll receive from us uh, will be compliant for federal uh, funding. Our, uh, our, our U.S. Um, headquarters is actually in Irvine, California, where we, uh, we have our customer service, our warehouse, and our technical support available to you. Uh, this is actually where Adrian, who's leading our call today, uh, resides. The, um, the company is a little bit different than some of the other manufacturers that you may find as, as we are an uh, organization of 300 plus employees that are solely focused on uh, video. So we, uh, we really work hard to make sure that we bring the best solutions to our customers. Uh, and one of the things that you'll find working with us, if you haven't already worked with us, is that uh, as a uh, project-driven organization, uh, some of our key points are is to work hand in hand with you to make sure that your customers get the right solutions um, so that A, they stick with you and B, so that uh, as they, they progress with uh, future projects that they, they continue to work with you as well. So with that said, Adrian, I'll uh, turn it back to you. All right. We also have on our webinar Joe McCarthy. Do you want to give a brief introduction for yourself as well? Uh, Joe Hudak did a pretty good job. I would just say after these webinars are finished and completed, if you have any questions or if you need any assistance with any projects, just don't hesitate to reach out to us. Great. Thank oh, you, guys. A a Adrian, one other name we should uh, yep. we should bring recognition to is, too, is I'm sure that Gary Clark is uh, one of our regional sales managers out of the uh, the Texas area is, is on the call as well. So he's available for support as well if you if you need support with projects. All right, perfect. All right, so moving forward, our unified solution covers a lot of different um, components and pieces that uh, they all tie together pretty well. They have all been integrated in a seamlessly solution for ACTI. 
In previous webinars, we talked a little bit about the NVR3. That was last week. And um, this week, we will be focusing on the central management system on the TV well. Our plan is to continue to have uh, regular sessions um, throughout the next few weeks. Uh, so please feel free to take a look at the upcoming calendar sessions, uh, we, uh, sessions that we have in our calendar. Uh, you'll find that in our website, and we will be sending out invitations as well. So, like I said, today we will be focusing on the central management system and the TV wall. Now, when it comes to the licensing, um, Joe, do you want to take this one? Sure, sure. Um, you were you meant Joe Hudak, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the the great thing about ACTI uh, when we talk to our customers is. We are uh, installer and uh, end user budget friendly for, for our for our customers. A lot of the the VMS products that are on the the market today have potentially true two drawbacks that we um, constantly hear about. One of them is is that uh, we're paying an ongoing fee for the licensing for the VMS that we currently use, uh, which can be depending on the size of the project into the tens of thousands of dollars a year. Um, and then the second issue that we hear is, is when we need to add a camera or replace a camera, um, it, it takes a while to do because we have to get in touch with tech support. We have to call in MAC addresses. They have to send us information back, uh, which, which makes it a little bit uh, tedious for the, the technicians when they have to do this with a project. So the great thing about ACTI and what I love to talk to the customers about is, is that when you buy a license for us, it's, it's yours for life and you're not going to see a second charge for that license, uh, which means that now moving forward as you plan out your budgets, you can uh, you can plan towards phase two and phase three and to use that money to pay for plan two or, or phase two or three of your project as opposed to paying a service agreement to ACTI every year just to get the newest software or firmware. That comes when you buy the license from us. So there's no hidden fees in, the, in that respect. The second point uh, to what I was talking about in regards to um, the um, replacement of cameras on a system is because we don't tie licenses directly to a uh, to a device when uh, when the time comes to upgrade a camera if they go from a one to a five megapixel camera uh, three years from now uh, all the technician simply has to do is go into the, uh, the system remove the current camera from the system that uh, that license becomes available again uh, in the system and then when they plug the new camera in uh, we'll go ahead and reuse that same license so Literally changing out a camera for licensing uh, takes less than less than a minute to do for a technician that's uh, that's familiar with our, our software. So again, the great things about us is uh, we're we're made to be intuitive and we're also made to uh, to be budget friendly from the license standpoint. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Joe. So. When it comes to the central management system, uh, we do have two different options. You can go with our either the software only and or the standalone server, just like what you had with the NVR3, and we also have that for the TV wall. Well, one of the differences between um, using software uh, is that you will build your own hardware, so you can select your own um, components, so CPU, memory, graphic card, everything that you actually want to have on um, your hardware, you'll be able to build it yourself and select it. With the software, you'll be able to go up to 6,400 channels. You can purchase as many licenses as you need, and then uh, you can always expand as you go as well, just like uh, Joe mentioned with the licensing system. and. You will be responsible of testing uh, and making sure that the hardware operating system and the software itself is kept up to date and then it's all compatible and working. And then when it comes to technical support from the hardware as well, you'll have to get that as well from your own vendor. So there's definitely some advantages and flexibility of using software, but there's also additional responsibility you will have to take by um, taking ownership of the hardware in uh, warranty. Now, with a standalone server, it is a turnkey solution, so you get everything from ACTI, including warranty and support. You can go up to the same amount of channels on the central management system. It does come with bundle licenses if you purchase it. 
um, and then um, you'll also have everything pre-tested, pre-configured, and licensed to work. So that means you don't have to worry about the operating system, making sure it works with hardware and uh, compatibility as well of software uh, with both um, hardware and software and, and operating system. And also when it comes to hardware, you'll have uh, the standard three-year warranty that we have on our servers. So uh, there's also very good benefits of using the standalone solution. This is actually one of the preferred methods for, uh, I would say, probably about 80% of our customers. But we do have the software option available uh, if you prefer the flexibility of using software yourself. So if you decide to go with uh, our standalone servers, we do have a couple of different options. We have um, um, CMS. Uh, that it's built for smaller projects or uh, take a smaller footprint, or we do have options that you know, go into a uh, server room and then you'll place it in a rack mount. Um, so we do have those two different options when it comes to installation. And depending on your particular needs, uh, we do have different options within the rack mount, one that is more simple, and the one that we have recently introduced that um, does support dual redundancy, dual operating system uh, redundancy as well. So um, it, there's definitely a couple of different options you can go with when it comes to the standalone server. With the and uh, CMS, we only have one edition, which contrasts with our NBR3, in which we have two, the enterprise and the corporate. Um, I, I apologize, there's a typo here. It, it should be CMS2 edition. So uh, it does have all the same functionalities as our NBR3. As you'll learn during our demo, the interface is very similar. Uh, they look almost identical, so that the benefit with that is that the learning curve between transition, transitioning from an NBR3 to a CMS2 system um, goes virtually from zero to um, none, uh, just because it's, it's an identical interface. So there's really not, not nothing you need to learn new if you are scaling up your system from a single NBR uh, to multiple NBRs, no matter if it's on the same location or in uh, different uh, yeah, geographic locations. Now, with the TV wall, um, you might be wondering why do you why do I need to a TV wall? Is that necessary component? Is that something I always have to use? So, the TV wall is actually uh, very specific to uh, having a control center or having a location where you can install a virtual matrix and you want to have multiple monitors connected to the, um, to the CMS client and then you want to have a little bit more control. So if, for example, you have a situation where you have a break-in and then you have a dispatch center and you want to have multiple monitors for your security staff to monitor, then you can actually have that uh, auto-populate the TV wall monitors on a particular event. So no matter if, for example, if someone breaks in into a car, um, the same thing. If you have motion detection enabled, um, you will be able to automatically send events into your TV wall and make your security staff to react to an incident uh, more efficiently. So when it comes to the TV wall, you can set up as many monitors as you need. Um, it all depends uh, on the graphic hard capabilities, and then um, architecture of the central management system and the TUL looks something like this. So you can have multiple cameras connected to one NVR. You can have as many NVRs as you need onto the CMS. Uh, the CMS is able to manage unlimited NVRs and a uh, maximum of uh, 6,400 cameras. And then on the CMS, you can have as many clients as you need. Um, as we'll learn soon, the CMS manages the same type of clients as the NBR3, so it does have a workstation, a web client, uh, and you have the mobile apps as well. And then on top of that, you can add control centers that could be on the same facility or could be on different facilities as well. Um, in this case, it will be the TV walls that can control. If you go, for example, with one of our TV walls or standalone servers, you can get up to four monitors per TV wall. But if you're building your own, it's really going to be upon the graphic cards that you're using and how many monitors it can support. So. 
if you're going with our, our TV wall, uh, we do have a part number for you here, uh, the TVW100, that um, small box that can support up to four monitors. Um, it does have uh, an independent graphic card and it does come with a license included. So there is a little bit of a difference of the licensing for the TV wall versus the CMS2. So the CMS2, it's just like our NVR3 um, with the small difference that it doesn't differentiate between active and third-party cameras. So no matter which type, no matter which type of camera it is, it's only going to take one license per channel. So that's on the CMS. On the TV wall, the licensing uh, it does have all of the characteristics that we talked about before about no additional fees, so uh, support, uh, warranty, um, upgrades. But uh, there is a license, and that's going to be one license per server. So for every box that you want to have that has four monitors or more, if you're building your own server, then you'll only need one license. So let's say, for example, in this um, example that we have here, in which we have um, six monitors or a single monitor, for example, per TV wall server, if we have four servers for TV wall, then that would mean that we will need four licenses for TV wall. And then for the cameras, uh, if we have two MVRs, it doesn't matter really how many MVRs we have, but it matters how many cameras we have. So in this case, if we have a total of eight cameras, you will need a total of eight licenses on your central management system. So here we have a couple of examples of um, some of our customers that have built their control centers. Um, depending on their particular needs, they might add as many monitors as they need, and then based on that, they'll decide how many TV wall servers they will have. Uh, performance, though, um, it does depend on the graphic card capabilities and on the CPU and RAM and the other hardware components as well. So depending on the configurations as well that you have on your camera configurations, um, you'll, you'll be able to display more channels or not. Hey, Adrian, real quick question here for you. Um, sure. Obviously, with the CMS and the TV wall and the MVRs, uh, it sounds like um, a system design could be a little bit more labor intensive in respects to the, the hardware and the software that you need. What, what level of support is available for, for everybody that's on the call if they do get a, a job of this size? Great. Um, so the good news about um, going into designing a system that has a central management system, a TV wall, multiple MBRs, is that ACTI, both me and uh, our um, business development managers and sales directors on the call as well, they are all available to work with you on the system design. So we'll take it from the very first stages in which you receive uh, an inquiry about, um, about a project all the way to going working with you in the RFP or RFQ, and then um, providing system design floor plans, um, doing calculations for storage, uh, bandwidth, and making sure you get all of the pieces and components you will need for the central management system, TV wall, and uh, going through the proof of concept phases making sure that uh, the installation goes uh, smoothly. We do have services as well in which we can uh, help you to commission and install the, um, sorry, configure the system and optimize it, and also um, going through trainings. So all of, during all of those stages in which you start the project uh, design and all the way in which you actually had to go through a user accepting test, um, then we will we'll walk you through all uh, those stages. So I think that's kind of like um, what what you were um, looking to to get a little bit more information. Is that right, Joe? No, that, that's that's excellent, Adrian. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's always a concern that this could be overwhelming. What do I do? The uh, as Adrian stated, just to summarize, we're there for, for you from beginning to end. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call. We're we're willing to help. So thank you for answering that. All right, perfect. All right, so um, just to give you an idea, uh, I know sometimes when it comes to the TV wall, a lot of people have used our NVR3, maybe even our central management system. But uh, when it comes to the TV wall, there's always questions about how it works. So it's actually pretty straightforward. As long as the um, 
the, the Windows server can detect the monitors, then the TV wall will be able to read them. So it's actually pretty straightforward. So this is just to give you an idea. I think we're all pretty much familiarized on connecting multiple monitors on Windows and having your display configurations. So it's kind of like the same thing. Uh, but when it comes to the TV wall server, uh, you'll also have the capability of seeing those monitors virtually on your central management system. So during our demo, I'll briefly show how those configurations look like uh, just to get you an idea. But again, it's actually pretty straightforward because you will be able to just drag and drop cameras onto your virtual monitors and decide what kind of layouts you want to use. So no matter if you're drag and dropping cameras, layouts, um, or predefined views, then you will be able to make it um, very um, simple for your security staff to just drag and drop cameras. And you can also go ahead and set up automatic events. So if you do have, for example, an, an analytic event, uh, no, doesn't matter if it's a motion detection or a more advanced analytic event as we covered in some of our other sessions before, such as the vehicle detection, you will be able to push those events automatically into one of the monitors for your security staff to be alerted in real time and be able to take proper, the proper actions to, to address those events. Okay. So I hope uh, I've uh, given a proper introduction on the main uh, components on the central management system and the TV wall. We will now move forward with a um, brief live demo and show some of the capabilities of the central management system. Like I said, uh, the main goal on the live demo is to show that the interface between the NDR3 and the CMS2 is very similar between the two products and there's no learning curve. So I will go through the basic features just to show you and highlight maybe some of the differences. Um, so I hope that um, that gives you a better understanding of how the central management system works. As I mentioned before, if you do have questions, please feel free to uh, add those into the Q&A section and we will make sure to cover those toward the end of the presentation. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the central management system. In this case, I'm gonna be using the web client. Um, uh, sorry, before doing that, let me show you just one quick slide. Um, the central management system, as I mentioned before, does have the three options that we have on the ER3. So we do have the mobile client app, uh, we do have the workstation, and we do also have the web client. And I apologize here, it should say um, CMS2, not NDR3. So that means that we have a dedicated workstation just for the central management system. And um, in the future as well, we will be releasing later this year a new version of the server that will support web clients that are not Internet Explorer. So you'll be able to connect to do basic functions such as Live View Playback using other browsers such as Chrome, Safari, Firefox. So even from a different operating system, you will be able to um, access into these um, CMS and also on to the NVR. All right, so let me go back to the demo page right here. Um, the login page, if you actually take a look, no matter if you're using the workstation or the web client, it's identical to the NDR3. The only difference is that you will see, instead of saying uh, NDR3, it will say CMS2, but it's um, basically the same thing. Uh, for this um, demo, I will be showing the latest version that is published on our website, which is the CMS2 Enterprise version 2.0.12.24. So that is the latest version. Uh, we do recommend that if you have been using our central management system and you're trying to learn some of the new features, um, please update uh, to the latest version and refer to the NVR3 new features webinar that we did last week. We do have recordings of those on our website and that's gonna cover um, just the latest features on our NVR3 and they all apply as well for the CMS2 just uh, the, because the way we've designed the product and integrated the product, all of the features available on the NVR normally are replicated on the CMS2 as well. So, Let's go ahead and uh, jump into the demo itself. As you might see on the right side, we do have the same three tabs that we have on the NDR3. So we have Live View, Playback, and Setup. 
we have our view panel here in the top and we also have um, the view panel um, and also your camera panel here on the left side so everything looks the same the main difference that you'll see on the live view page is going to be that instead of having just cameras on your um, on your camera panel, you actually have NDRs. So what that means is that you can actually expand further all of your NDRs. So this is where you can actually have unlimited NDRs. And instead of just seeing your cameras, you'll actually see those and be able to expand them. So you can actually mix and match. So let's say, for example, you're looking for all of your parking lot cameras. And then let's say that you have multiple sites and they're all on different geographic locations. And you can actually just type in parking lot and then it's going to show all the different cameras that you have. So in this case, um, I don't really have a lot of cameras that have the parking lot name on it. Uh, but just, just to give you an example and an idea of how that works. Um, so you can just drag and drop cameras just like what you did before with um, the NVR3. So I can go ahead and um, put any cameras like this. I can go ahead and double click on one of the cameras and it will auto populate it. At any point, I can go back and click on one of my views to uh, repopulate with the same cameras I have saved before. I do have the capability of showing EMAPs. So just like what I did before on my NVR3, I can get a preview of a camera and I can also also jump between different views. So if I want to um, drill down, for example, uh, start with a map from one location and then um, continue to jump between different maps, I can go ahead and do that with EMAPs just like what I did with the NVR3. You also have the capabilities of using uh, the web controller. So if you want to embed a website. And um, the only big difference you'll see is that here you also have the TV wall controller. So this is where you will actually display all of your monitors. If you actually scroll down on your left side panels, you'll see that you have multiple TV wall servers here. You can have as many as you need. Again, uh, this is unlimited. So you can have, um, let's say, for example, multiple control centers. In each control center, you can have two or three TV walls, and then you'll be able to manage them all from here. When it comes to permissions, you'll be able to assign who has control of those TV walls as well. So um, all of the granular permissions that we cover a little bit about on the previous sessions for the MVR3, you'll find that we have all of those capabilities as well on the TV wall uh, permissions on the, uh, are available on the CMS. So all of the other features are also available here on the NVR3. You can go ahead and expand something. You can go ahead and use the picture-in-picture -picture digital zoom. Uh, you'll be able to use your optical zoom capabilities as well. And um, just to show you what the difference of that is, so let's say, for example, we go ahead and take this camera. Um, we can go ahead and zoom in. Uh, I'm using optical zoom right here to uh, going a little bit further in the field of view. So we have actually narrowed it down a lot. And this is what I'm actually recording at the moment. Um, so let me zoom out just a little bit more. So when it comes to using digital zoom, I can go ahead and take, click here and decide, for example, to use the digital zoom functionality. And that it's different from the optical zoom just because the optical zoom means that I am only recording what I'm seeing while on digital zoom I'm actually recording everything and only whenever I decide to actually go ahead and zoom out for example completely here with the optical zoom I will be able to change the field of view if I go ahead and do a digital zoom then I can actually change my field of view but this is just temporary. It's just digital. It's just like taking a uh, photo with your smartphone and then uh, taking a look on how that looks. So that's pretty much similar to using digital zoom versus optical zoom. You're actually changing the field of view. Okay. So if you right click, you'll be able to take snapshots, create bookmarks. That's all the same as you were able to do it on the NDR3. Now, if you go to playback, you can actually have the same type of features that we had on, uh, again, the NVR3. So, for example, if you want to go ahead and do um, 
thumbnail search, you'll be able to right click, click on thumbnail search, and then you will be able to create different thumbnails. Um, for example, right now it's doing it every 10 minutes. I can go ahead and if I want to watch what time the camera change uh, from night mode to day mode, I can go ahead and start clicking on the thumbnails and narrow it down all the way to 10 seconds. Now we'll be able to see that. So there's no cars for me to take a look at the moment I'm in the parking lot, but at least I'll be able to give you an idea of how the thumbnail search looks like on this camera. So in this case, I can go ahead and take the thumbnail a couple of seconds just before the event. I'm gonna enlarge it, and now we're gonna just play through. So in just a couple of seconds, we should see how the camera changes to day mode, just because there's enough light now because of the sunrise. All right, so if you go ahead and select more cameras for playback, you'll actually be able to get um, all of your cameras on your synchronized playback. You'll be able to use up to 64 cameras simultaneously. Uh, on synchronized playback, and you'll have access to all the other functionalities that we also had on our NDR3, including our event search, smart search, bookmark search, um, and also some of the new introduced uh, capabilities such as license plate and also facial recognition event search. So all of those are available on the social management system. Like I said, um, the idea is to make the transition from an um, NDR3 uh, system to a central management system as seamlessly as possible. So as you jump between uh, the two products, there's almost no differences at all. Um, like I said, one of the main things that we covered before on differences, it's the capability of uh, managing not only cameras. So if you actually go to your setup page, instead of just seeing camera panel, you'll see a source panel. And here you'll be able to manage all of your NDRs. So it's not only the capability of mixing and matching views from different NDRs, it's the capability of also being able to manage your NDRs from a central location without having to uh, log in and log out to different uh, systems. So. Um, you could, of course, just go ahead and use a workstation and log in and log out to other systems one at a time, but uh, having everything in a single screen and being able to manage all of the events from here, that actually creates a lot of added value and saves you a lot of time. So all the capabilities are available here when it comes to managing your devices and your NVRs. Uh, when it comes to users, you'll have all of the options as well. So if, let's say, for example, that if you want to use um, uh, a guest account and you want to set permissions for uh, your different NDRs, you'll be able to narrow it down to the NDR and to the camera level. So instead of, for example, having de dedicated um, unified, solution, unified settings, I can go ahead and um, start specifying for each NVR and for each camera within each NVR, what kind of permissions I want to have. So let's say, for example, I have um, multiple schools. Um, this is a great option actually for you to be able to manage your system just because um, let's say that you have, what, 10 different schools and each school you might want to have a principal from each school to have access only to their system, you'll be able to allow those permissions, and then you might have security or campus police, for example, um, that they might have access to all the cameras, but they will only have access to live view and playback, not exporting. Um, and then you could have, for example, the IT administrator staff to have access to everything else. So all of those different permissions, you can assign them from here, and you can make them as granular as needed. Um, you also have the capabilities of um, setting up permissions for the TV wall. So if you want to have uh, permissions on who can operate it and who can set it up, you can also set that individually for TV wall server, or you can just go ahead and um, just configure it as an overall setting. Now, a feature that I do get asked a lot is do I have to, for example, if I configure a camera, do I have to go ahead and configure my 500 cameras one at a time. 
Uh, the answer to that is no. You actually have a copy functionality that is actually pretty neat. You can actually go ahead and copy those permissions. You, so you just set one of them first, and then after you set that up, you can go ahead and copy those permissions. So believe it or not, a lot of all the, the other VMSs out there don't have that capability. You actually have to do it one at a time. So if you've struggled with that, uh, good news, the central management system actually allows you to go ahead and copy those settings. So you can go ahead and select which settings you want to copy and to which user groups you want to assign that. And that, that's about it. Or if you want to do it per camera, you can go ahead and um, copy those settings from one camera to other cameras. So for example, if you actually want to select them all, you can just go ahead and click all of the NBRs um, or just select all, and then you can copy those settings. So uh, it makes the process a lot easier for you to manage and it takes a lot less time. From the central management system setup page, you'll be able to also manage your TV walls. You'll be able to program the event handler. Um, in which you can decide, for example, that if you do have motion detection on one of the cameras, you can program um, the TV wall. So you can go ahead and decide to send it to a TV wall, and you can select to either send camera only, or you can send a view, or you can even have uh, TV wall views pre-saved and pre-populated and even patrolling. So you can have any of those uh, configurations and you can select which camera and to which TV wall and even select in which part of the layout you want to have it. So when it comes to event handling, it gives you a lot of flexibility and uh, being able to do that from here, it's, it's, um, it makes it a lot easier for you to manage. So that puts an end um, to the overview of the central management system. As I mentioned um, before, if you do have questions or anything that um, you want to learn more about, please feel free to add those into the Q&A section, and we will be happy to address them in a couple minutes. Okay, so going back to our slides, we actually do have this demo site available for you to try it, just like what we had all for our NVR3, we do have one for our central management system as well. So you can try this on the web client or on the mobile app. So um, as we send you uh, the slides of this presentation today, you'll get information for you to access to the central management system. So when it comes to working with Acti, um, we do have a number of tools available on our website. So if you go to acti.com and then uh, you go into the main page and you click on the project planner that we have right here, you'll be able to find all of the different um, tools that are available for you to start planning your project. Um, as we did mention, we will help you with all of the um, uh, information that you need uh, to start planning everything from scratch. Uh, but if you want to do and be a little proactive and take some of con some control on, on the planning yourself, then uh, we do have all of these tools for you to start working with. So everything from selecting um, the different TV wall options that we have to going uh, into the um, throughput calculations that your server can take, bandwidth and storage, hard drives. Um, and selecting the PC clients, um, going to making sure that your third-party cameras will work with our NVR3. Uh, if it works with the NVR3, it's going to work with the CMS too, so you don't really have to worry for that about the CMS. And then uh, everything from the camera side, I'm selecting camera models, uh, making sure that your lens will give you the coverage you need, and also going uh, into the mounting accessories and POE components. So all of those tools are available for you to use on our website. Now, when it comes to technical support, uh, you can always reach out to me directly, uh, or uh, you can go uh, to one of our engineers uh, through our customer help desk, and also through our phone uh, access that is available for you uh, 9 a.m. Eastern time to 8 p.m. So that brings an end to our presentation. 
please join uh, Active.com, uh, register into our uh, learning center as well if you can, um, and you will have access to the upcoming sessions. We actually have one later today that is going to talk a little bit about our cloud solutions. So we will talk about our digital signage and also our BMS in the cloud. So if you want to learn more about those, uh, join our noon session Eastern Time, and uh, we will be happy to introduce you to those solutions. We will have the same um, webinar we just covered today as well uh, in our upcoming session this Thursday at noon as well. So if you want to um, give a reference to one of your uh, workers or one of your uh, clients or end users, for example, to join this, feel free to do so, um, and we will be walking them through the CMS. So that puts an end to our presentation. Uh, I will now go ahead and cover the questions that were put on our Q&A section. Um, Joe Huda, Joe McCarthy, Gary Clark, do you guys want to give out a um, brief summary while I'm taking a look at the beginning? Sure. sure. We can do that. Joe, Joe McCarthy, any, any final statements for you? I'll let you go first. Um, no, AG did a great job of, of reviewing everything. Um, I, I have to be honest, when I, when I sit in on Adrian's uh, calls and webinars, I learn something myself, so, so I know that they, they are useful. Um, I see there are a number of questions lined up, um, so I'll let Adrian get right to those. Okay. Um, let, me, let me just jump in real quick. A couple points I wanted to make. Um, if you have a project that you need assistance with, we're there for you, not only from design, but also for project registration to, uh, to help you guys uh, financially win projects. The other thing that, uh, that I quite often get asked is these presentations are great um, for an overview, but my technicians need training as well. Do you guys offer technical training? Yes, absolutely. We can set up technical training to, uh, to train your technicians on how to, uh, to program all of the, all of the software. In addition to on, on larger projects, a lot of times we also do recommend factory certification where we'll bring out a field application engineer uh, for cost to actually certify the system and optimize it for you. So just keep that in mind that the, uh, the project registration and the, the additional technical support for your technicians and on-site support are available as well. Adrian, uh, I'll, I'll turn it back to you. All right. Thank you. So uh, let me go ahead and start covering uh, the questions on Q&A, so I hope I can address them all. Um, so the first question, it's regarding about being able to send out important notifications to um, different clients or customers in different locations at the same time. So it is possible for you to configure the event handler to set up uh, an event, so you can have actually pop-up alert uh, on multiple locations. So, for example, if you have security staff in different locations, you'll actually be able to get those pop-ups on uh, all of your workstations or your hotspots as well. But if you're actually trying to customize and send specific information, for example, an alert or an RSS feed, then actually probably a digital signage solution is what it will be a more suitable solution for you. We actually do have that um, topic going to be discussed in the upcoming webinar this noon, uh, today at noon. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the digital signage um, components, then I will suggest you join to that as well. So there are a few differences between just being able to display video and being able to display other types of content. So we do have that uh, solution available. Um, the next question, it's related to um, how does the TV wall or video wall server run? Um, so it, it's actually a dedicated software. So you have to install the TV wall server uh, software. It's, it's actually a software package, just like our NDR3 or CMS package. Um, you'll have to run that. And like I mentioned, it is licensed. Um, so you will have to activate a license per server on, um, on the TV wall server itself. So uh, you will need that license, and again, it all depends on the number of monitors that you're trying to watch. Um, if you, all of the monitors are going to the same server, so for example, if you only need two monitors per server, then you'll actually be able to connect um, those into a single server and then just license one. If you want to have multiple servers in different locations, then for each server, you'll need a license. 
Um, we, we have another question about um, how does it work um, if I do need a, a CMS to be able to use the TV wall? The question, the answer to that is yes. The central management system is an essential component for the TV wall, so you do need to have that to be able to um, access to the um, TV matrix uh, components. Um, there, are, if you do not have the CMS, you always have the option of opening up multiple workstations. Um, I see one of the comments as, as well that they had issues where uh, they tried to open multiple instances of the CMS too. Um, I would address that uh, with our technical support team, so I will suggest you uh, calling them directly uh, or shoot me an email later on and we can take a look. Uh, I would. I would only give you general recommendations for that. Uh, when it comes to the CMS workstation, you want to do the same optimization you would you do with the NDR3. The more channels you have, you'll uh, in the higher resolution and frame rate it is. You want to optimize those settings, and you want to also use our smart dual stream, in which the stream one and two automatically switch as you adjust your views. So. Um, we will probably cover a, um, a little bit more about that in upcoming sessions when we talk a little bit more, more the technical details on configuring and optimizing your NBR3 and CMS2. Uh, but like I said, uh, please feel free to reach out to me later on um, and or our technical support team and we'll be happy to help you with that. Um, well now, uh, I have another question about being able to limit the permissions for audio on the CMS. That is currently not a feature that you can set. You can not only select if you want to play video but not, not audio. That is not uh, something available right now, but uh, we will be happy to take a look and see if that's something that could be added to an upcoming version. So we can look into that for sure. Uh, for facial recognition, is there any way I can um, go ahead and log it, the faces into a database? So the good news is that our facial recognition system, it does have a separate platform where you can actually do um, the uh, facial recognition whitelist or blacklist. So if you do have a list that you want to match it to a database, we call those whitelist or blacklist, depending if it's going to be used for um, setting someone to um, unwanted or wanted um, list. So we do have those capabilities. The CMS2 and the NDR3 will just log those events, but if you actually want to search across a database, then uh, you will have to do it from the interface of the different product. Uh, we will be covering a little more about analytics in different sessions. So if you want to learn more about it, please um, make sure that you stay on um, track to follow our calendar, and we will be introducing those in the upcoming weeks. Now, the other question is, um, I think actually that's, that's about it. Um, it's also one other question that was asked before um, is, do I need CMS2? And the answer is yes. For the TV wall, you will need the CMS2. That's an essential component. So um, yeah, you will have to get that to, to work with the TV wall. And let me see, I think there was a couple of other questions in the chat. Um, all right, so facial recognition analytics that are built in on the NDR and the CMS. So all of our analytics, we are actually built in those analytics on the NDR or the CMS itself. They could be either camera-based analytics or it could be a software-based analytics. Uh, meaning that they require a dedicated server. So, for example, analytics such as line crossing, uh, virtual fence, um, car detection, those are all analytics that could be camera-based. So you actually need to go into the camera itself and take a look at the specifications to see if it supports those analytics. It does not require additional license for you to use those analytics that are camera-based. Um, you just need to make sure that um, you have the latest version of the NDR3 and the CMS2 to configure those events. But for uh, other more advanced analytics, 
such as facial recognition, uh, license plate detection, you do require an additional server, uh, and that server is licensed. So it all depends on the type of analytic you're looking for, uh, if it will require a license or not. For the most part, if it's camera-based, it will not require a license. If it's server-based and you require an additional appliance, it will require a license. Um, I think those, uh, let me see if there's any other questions. Uh, there's a couple of uh, additional questions. Do we offer, offer a total certification package for end users? We do um, offer end user trainings in which we will go ahead and make sure they're uh, fully capable of operating their um, NDR, CMS, uh, TV wall, and also manage it. So we do have that as an option, uh, and um, you can reach out to your sales rep, or uh, I can forward you to the right person to you, for you to go ahead and, and um, get more information on that. And um, the other question, um, I think maybe Joe Hudek or Joe McCarthy can address them. Uh, they, it is um, a general question for ACTI, how are we competitive versus other systems? such as Bosch, Honeywell, Pelco, whenever you're actually uh, working on an e-tender. I'm sorry, on a what, Adrian? On an e-tender. Oh, um, so, so ACTI has a, um, has a handful of, of tools in regards to resources, uh, software, hardware. So as, as we, uh, we work with uh, with you and you get into a competitive situation, you'll see that ACTI a lot of times uh, meets and exceeds our competitors in respects to the, the software and the hardware. Uh, currently, w for example, with our, our camera selections, we have uh, over 200 camera models available for you. So you'll see that we can pretty much meet any spec if not exceed it. Uh, the the um, <clears throat> From the software aspect, uh, as we sit down and look with the uh, work with you and your customers uh, for their solution, you'll see that what Adrian talked about today is just kind of the tip of the iceberg in regards to the software solution that we can op can offer. Um, of course, we can go into the the facial recognition package, the LPR, uh, for more forensic search, um, things of that nature. So, if there's something specific, uh, please please let me know, and we'll we'll discuss that. Uh, the other thing that you'll find is that a lot of times in regards to A, response times, and then B, cost, uh, ACTI turns out favorable. Uh, as we work with, uh, with our tech support from ground up through the end of a project, through the, the end user training on projects, what you'll find is, is that we're a little bit different than some of those larger cust uh, companies, that uh, you work with multiple different people who uh, start to become segmented in what they do and it becomes a little bit difficult to work on a project because you're working with so many individuals from a manufacturer. Uh, as we work on projects with you, we try to keep, keep you working with one to two people. So as you move through a project, it's always the same people working and moving with you so that there's no confusions or retelling of the stories as to what the solution is. And then also in regards to cost, uh, through project registrations, we can be uh, very competitive in, in pricing uh, to help put you guys in a favorable position to, uh, to win projects. So I hope that uh, that was long-winded, but I hope that answers all of your question, all of that question. Of course, if there's uh, additional topics you want to talk about, uh, I'm not sure who asked that question, but feel free to reach out to me. We can uh, we can go over them uh, with you in further detail. Hey Joe, I would just add to that. Um, we have uh, um, a system or a program where if you send us your part numbers, whether it be Bosch, Honeywell, Coco. The part numbers that are currently in the spec, um, we can do a cross and actually send you a side-by-side -side comparison of those specifications, so you can see the, you know, for example, the, the Pelco camera and the Act Die camera. You can see the specifications side by side, and then we can also send you uh, in a Word document uh, the actual A and E specs, so you can take the actual Act Die specs and submit them um, as your uh, submittal. So uh, we do have uh, a few different tools that you can use that are, that are useful when trying to flip a job from one manufacturer to us. Let, let me add on to one more thing there in regards to comparison as well, Joe. Uh, the software that you see in front of you is actually ACTI engineered and ACTI owned. 
as you work with a lot of the other manufacturers, what you'll find is that their software is not homegrown. It's actually produced by another software solution. So in regards to comparing, one of the great things about working with ACPI is is we, uh, we put you in control with your customer because we do own the software, where a lot of times when you buy from other manufacturers, they are uh, getting it from a third party, which creates uh, longer turnaround times when new features want to come out and or potentially tech support as well. Uh, one of the great benefits of working with ACTI is we control that technology for, for our company. Adrian, back to you. All right, so that puts an end to our presentation. We do appreciate you joining our session. Uh, like I said, we will have an upcoming session that will talk a little bit more about our cloud option solutions for um, digital signage and our uh, BMS as well. So feel free to join us to that. And we will have another session of the CMS2 uh, covering the same topics we discussed today, this upcoming Thursday. So in case uh, you missed it uh, or you wanna share it to someone else, uh, you can go ahead and let them know that we will have this on um, Thursday at noon. So thank you very much for your time and have a great day.